Lowering his own record at 37 years of age, Elliot Kipchoge's world record performance over the marathon distance in a pair of Nike's AlphaFly Next% 2 has turned heads. We know a shoe does not make the runner. The shoe is just the icing on the cake. But keeping all things equal, could the current design of Nike's super shoe yield a more favorable result over the marathon distance compared to its predecessor, the AlphaFly Next% 1? In today's video, I'm going to go over the design, my observations, and take on why the AlphaFly Next% 2 should be your shoe of choice when racing the marathon distance over the AlphaFly Next% 1. Disclaimer, no one is paying me to make this video, Nike is not seeing the video before I post it, and they did not send me the shoes to review. With that being said, be sure to SMASH that like button and leave a comment on your shoe of choice between the two and why. It really helps the video. Thanks fam. In my opinion, the AlphaFly Next% 2 was made to correct faults seen in the Nike AlphaFly Next% 1. Some complain that the AlphaFly Next% 2 is too heavy and does not have as much pop compared to the version 1. The AlphaFly Next% 2 is a complete replacement of the AlphaFly Next% 1 over the marathon distance, in my opinion. Here's why. Late stage fatigue in the marathon is obviously a detriment to your performance, and the design of the AlphaFly 2 takes that into heavy consideration. From its increased width of the midsole, about 1 cm thicker, to its increased heel to toe offset, 8 mm from 4 mm, to the extra Zoom X foam used in the length of the shoe and under the Zoom Air pod. In theory, more Zoom X would yield to a softer shoe. The version 2 ride has been described as firmer and not as responsive, which ironically will lead to an increase in lower leg stiffness. In the later stages of the marathon, there will be a point of fatigue where your cadence will drop, form will become sloppy, and leg stiffness decreases. This shoe should help mitigate that by design, more so compared to the AlphaFly Next% 1. The wider base of the AlphaFly Next% 2 allows more stability at the foot along with its added slits on the sides to aid with keeping your momentum when it comes to turns. This means less energy wasted. The added ZoomX foam underneath the Zoom Air pods has its place in correlation with the increased heel to toe offset compared to its predecessor. Keep in mind there are two things a company wants to show when releasing a shoe, that is innovation and design. They want the shoe to look cool and turn heads, but also have the shoe perform the way it's supposed to. As seen from my Nike AlphaFly Next% 1 vs Nike VaporFly Next% video, it is without question that the version 1 AlphaFly decreases your cadence and increases your stride length, thanks to the combination of all the technologies within the shoe, but more so the Zoom Air Pods. To offset this loss in cadence, the shoe needed a lower heel to toe drop of 4mm, so that overstriding does not suffice. By virtue, running in the AlphaFly Next% 2 will allow you to have a higher average cadence compared to the version 1, which in turn may help delay fatigue in the later stages of a marathon, which will improve your overall performance at the distance. The weight of the shoes are different. A US size 9 in the AlphaFly 2 is 8 ounces, versus a US size 9 in the AlphaFly Next% 1 is 7.4 ounces. Not looking at design and efficiency of the shoe, but weight alone, for every 1.8 ounces of weight hurts running economy roughly by 1%. We are looking at a 0.33% difference in effect on the running economy, which is probably negligible and offset by other changes in the AlphaFly 2. So I would not fret about the increase in weight. That isn't to say that Nike tried their best to remove excess weight from the shoe by using a thinner outsole and potentially trimming areas of ZoomX that are not really needed. This does not mean the AlphaFly 2 outperforms the AlphaFly 1 in everything. I personally would say half marathon on up, go with the version 2. Below the half marathon, go with the version 1. I know many people that love the ride of the version 1. I will do a separate video on my overall review of the AlphaFly 2, so subscribe and hit that notification bell for when I upload new content. Comment down below what you think about the version 1 versus the version 2. Why do you like one more than the other? If you like this video, watch this one next. I'll catch you all in the next one.